Hello, everyone. Welcome to the live stream. It is Sunday. Happy to have you guys here. As you know, there is a special guest today. I see some of you guys have been waiting on here for quite a while. I see comments of some of you guys that chimed in yesterday. Excited to be here today. Let's see, we've got Jordan on from Dublin. We've got Angela from Canada. Uh, Steve from Bangladesh. <clears throat> I'm seeing people from all over the world on today. Hey, Lucas. Hey, Nitro Gaming. So I'm about to introduce to you guys our special speaker for today. <clears throat> we have Carla McDougal. You guys probably saw the thumbnail and saw her picture. Well, she is the founder of a nonprofit organization, Reflective Life Ministries and Reflective Life Media Productions. Now, she is a film producer. She is an inspirational speaker and author. She's written three books. Um, and Carla truly believes that laughter breaks down walls and removes the masks in our lives. So, you know, she smiles to think of how the experiences God has allowed in her life teach her and remind her that he is in control. Have you guys ever been in those situations where, like, everything is going wrong and <laughs> You want to you want to cry, but you just have to laugh because really, <laughs> really, what else is there to do? So yes, yeah, she's got three Christian books now, encouraging the reader to live their lives for Jesus. She is an executive producer for the award-winning series Breaking Strongholds. Now I don't know if you guys have seen that yet, but we're going to talk about that today. I've seen the first four episodes, and you guys are going to really enjoy it. So she um. She's got this faith-based ministry and drama series that keeps the viewers guessing while addressing serious cultural issues like suicide and spiritual darkness. We talked about that last week, didn't we? The first time we really got deep on talking about spiritual darkness. So <clears throat> this series of hers is like a modern day parable and each episode creatively weaves God's truths into the storyline pointing to Jesus. She says, the only one capable of breaking your stronghold. So you guys might not even know that you have strongholds in your life, but we are going to talk about them. And we're excited. This is kind of, we're talking about the release of her show, Breaking Strongholds. It's on Amazon Prime, I believe, but it's also available for you guys to watch for free on YouTube. It just came out this month. So Carla and her husband both live in Houston, Texas, so... Without further ado, here is the beautiful Carla McDougall. Hi. Hello. It's so good to be with you this morning. Oh, we've got a lot of people chiming in. We've got Derek. We've got Lily. We've got Sonic Fan. We've got Frank. Let's see. Frozen Fan. Taha Ahmed. Dominic. Thank you for the love. Uh, we got Nicola, Karen, Elena. Lots and lots and lots of hey. people here to, <laughs> to see you today. This so, is fun. I titled uh, the, the message today, Breaking Strongholds, and that's not only the title of your brand new TV show, but that is something that every single person has to struggle with in their lives each day. Mm -hmm. And so we want to talk about both of those things. So... um now, when, when people, like, if you look up strongholds in the dictionary, it's like a defensive structure. It's a place you run to when you're in trouble, like a stronghold for refuge. And <clears throat> Psalms 9-9 says that the Lord is our refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. But probably people don't realize that bad things can be a stronghold, too. They can work against us. And the devil, Satan, the evil one, you know, Matthew 12, 29 talks about how else can one enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man. Then he can go into the house. So there's things that can get a hold of us that get a firm grip on us. And those can be strongholds that people might not know they're opening the door mm -hmm. to the evil one by getting involved with certain things, whether it's horror films, Ouija boards, just, and that's, you know, certain things, um, even, I don't know, people that they're around, 
can cause things in their life to be a stronghold to them. What What are your thoughts on this? And how, like, how did you experience this in your life? How have you been setting people free or helping show that they have these strongholds? And, and how did the thought of breaking these strongholds morph into the idea of this cool TV series you're doing? Mm, yeah, a lot yeah. Of <laughs> there is. And the whole time I'm thinking, okay, where am I going to start? You know, <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, we'll just go with it. So, um, yeah, you know, just if, if you don't mind, I'll back up a moment um, to we have been now in the production business for and it's, it's a nonprofit, but for uh, around 10 years. And the feature film we did before this is called We Are Stronger, which is actually perfect for this weekend, Memorial Weekend. It's about a soldier who's coming back from Afghanistan. He's injured and he deals with PTSD. And we literally, we show the, the effects behind the, you know, within the home, the internal struggles, um, the need for community and the hope and healing that Jesus provides. And in that, that I guess in, we were going through talking with different organizations, different veterans, just doing our due diligence. We started seeing, you know, we can show this up on the screen, but we need to connect with organizations that are on the front lines that can actually be, we can point people to, to help, help them through this. So it, it, as we did that, we started working with these organizations across the country. And when um, We Are Stronger came out, people would look at it and they would say, you know, that's me. And now I, I can see that I need to go get the help needed. Or another one was, uh, example, I didn't know that this, that's what my husband's dealing with, with these mental you know, health issues. I understand him more together. Let's go get some help. And, and we would point people that direction. So after we finished, we are stronger, um, which mm -hmm. as God takes it in, in, in our production business, it's amazing how he's the ultimate uh, producer. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm under him as the executive producer, but man, he is the ultimate. And so when, when we are stronger became its own entity, it just, went far and wide and it's now been seen i think mm. almost 7.5 million times we are still <laughs> getting feedback of and people are going we, we have follow-up curriculum that is a six-week study that you can study um and and grow and learn from and we saw breaking strongholds happen with that particular project and as we moved forward and we started seeing mm. okay where's our next area the idea of the teen suicide came to us that it was such an epidemic, at least in the area that we were living in, uh, mm -hmm. that we live in, in Montgomery uh, County, Texas, that at the time it was the highest rated um, in Texas of all suicides and suicide attempts as far as counties go. We lived right there and we had no clue that this was an issue. And so mm -hmm. we started investigating and working with um, counselors and those who had attempted and overcome. Mm -hmm. And we started seeing the, the strongholds that, that the enemy would have on people when it came to, to that particular issue. And that's when we decided, let's do a series that we literally uh, take and unfold how God can work through someone's life by helping with others involved. And there's a program called Safe Talk that, um, Catherine, if you've been through it, you've basically been through a mini, you basically went through a mini Safe Talk um, educational program in the first four episodes that when you finish, you're, you're, you've got a, kind of a training mindset now of how to look for those that are isolating and then how to ask that question you know, are you thinking about taking your life? And mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, we, and then we, we started dealing with, you know, there's, there's the stronghold of, of depression that um, comes upon people. And I've actually dealt with that myself uh, in the past. And can you talk about um, strongholds and what they are? Like you mentioned, depression is one of them. What, what are some other 
strongholds that get a hold of people that maybe they, you know, are, are they always connected to mental health? What would you say? No, I, I don't think always that that, that that is the case. Um, I believe that the enemy, uh, you know, Satan himself likes to come at us with different, different, he wants to kill, steal and destroy. Mm -hmm. That's what the word says. And Mm -hmm. if he sees a crack in any part of us, he's going to start to, you know, throw in his fiery darts our direction. And many times they hit, you know, right there in the mind. And if, if we continue to allow ourselves to think about that fear, Fear can be a big stronghold in, in people's life. I dealt with that my in my own life with, uh, interesting enough, when I was being called into ministry, I, um, I had a debate with God, if you could put it that way, um, for a good amount of time because I had a fear of reading in front of people mm-hmm. because I have now known mm-hmm. a type of dyslexia and used to years ago, whenever I was called to read in class or in you know Sunday school, wherever that might be, I would just start shaking. And yeah. because of of what uh, they would were pulling me out of school, trying to, uh, out of classes and English classes, trying to get me to read faster, and that yeah. wasn't my issue. You know, it actually made mm-hmm. it worse. And so the fear of mm-hmm. that just kept at times held me, you know, paralyzed in a way and captive Mm -hmm. to my own, my own self. And I knew that if I was called into this particular speaking ministry, I would have to read God's word in front of people. And I would, Mm -hmm. God, how can you call me Mm -hmm. to do that when you know what my issues are? And one day I just felt this moment of him speaking to my heart, uh, Carla McDougall. You're right. You can't do it. But in me, I'm going to do something in you that you can't do yourself. And Mm -hmm. guess what? You'll never get the glory. And at that point, it was just kind of releasing that fear. And what I always looked at as a weakness, he actually showed me that it was a uniqueness. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it held me captive until he... You know, I let go of that and let him do something in me that I can't do myself. And so now that uniqueness, he, I can't, I can't get the glory for it. He gets it. And I can't wow. remember a time going and speaking mm. in front of anybody and, and reading in front of groups that um, I messed it up. You know what I'm saying? Because it was him. And so yeah. it was a stronghold in my life that was broken. Um because of, because of what only he can do. So um, th- I think those strongholds can happen in, in a variety of different ways. That's great. And, and your movie, um, We Are Stronger, you, you mentioned dealing with PTSD. Do, do, if anybody is dealing with PTSD from whatever thing, do you think they, is it something that's relatable or is it more like just about the army kind of, Afghanistan kind of PTSD or if someone who's been raped or something has PTSD, would they be able to relate to that movie or would you lead them to like the, you made like study guides for them to go through. Would, and, and this is all available on your website for people to look at. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At reflective media mm-hmm. uh, dot, dot org, or um, there is stronger movie.com for that one. That is about anyone dealing with PTSD. And and the beautiful thing of that movie is it truly is like a bouquet of lives that have been put together and they're real stories Mm -hmm. of people, but it's put into a feature film that, um, Mm -hmm. that we, for example, we have a a burn survivor um, that is, is in the movie and she actually is in breaking stronghold. She's aunt Hazel. And she's, she's, she's a, a uh, burn survivor that lost one of her six boys in the fire. And her story is amazing. And it's weaved throughout um, that, that we are stronger. And then she, we brought her character into breaking strongholds as well. And so, so it's, it can be anyone. Um, we've got um, a, a sexual abuse, someone 
that is in there from uh, recovering from alcoholism, whatever, mm. you know, that has caused that PTSD, we okay. actually deal with that. And that study guide uh, refers to that as well. So. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. That's good. When I had wondered if people might be asking that. Okay. Was and that that's on Eli? YouTube also. That's on, you can watch We Are Stronger on YouTube also as well. Oh, okay. You yeah. guys are going to have to check that out. We Are Stronger. Somebody type that in the chat notes. Let's see. We yeah, have Elon really on. Ratatouille is on. We've got er Erica's on. Rafaela. CJ's on. And you guys, if you have any questions for Carla, type it in the chat and we'll be talking about them. Uh, we'll we'll do our best to answer your questions. Um, if any of you guys are struggling with any of this, so I loved how you said um, your it's not really your weakness. God showed you it's your uniqueness. That sounds totally like a line that Darman would say. A lot of people on today are fans from my work on Darman. He always has these taglines like it's not a disability it's a different ability and so that reminded me when you said it's not my weakness it's my uniqueness but no there's a lot of things like fear that stop us and i think i was talking to a 14 year old girl yesterday and um her mom you know said she's interested in modeling but she's afraid to walk on the runway because she's afraid she might slip or she might fall or she's not sure about her walk and things like that and I was just talking to her about fear and the different choices we have mm -hmm. around how we can perceive the fear and you know talking mm -hmm. about not letting that stop you from going after your dreams and what you said about yeah I can't do it so many of us talk ourselves out of our dreams because we can't do it and that mm -hmm. is actually you know the bible says when you are weak god is strong so you yeah. have to realize thank you elena thank you for the gift um, we have to realize that God puts his super on top of our natural. And when that happens, anything is possible. So in some ways, when, when you get to the point where you realize I can't do it, that is a gift because then you realize, oh, I have to call on God's help mm -hmm. and God can make this. If I could do it, if I was adept at all this stuff then I wouldn't need to call on God. Then I might be so tempted to go forward in my own might knowing I got this. This is no problem for me. And then mm -hmm. it's never going to be as good as God putting his strength on top of your weakness. If mm -hmm. you're just trying to do it in your own might. So I think mm -hmm. a lot of people, they let the fear stop them instead of calling out to the one that can, you know, conquer that right. fear. Absolutely. Well, the, the enemy wants that fear to stop you from moving forward yeah. with what God has planned, you know, uh, as, as a believer, he knows he can't have you because you're already you're already in Jesus. You're already his. But he he can try to do everything he can to to halt you from what right. God's plan is for you to accomplish for the kingdom, right? And so, yeah. um, so it truly is letting him do in us what we can't do ourselves. And mm -hmm. um, so many times it's it it can roll over in the in in our minds, right, to where it just becomes what we think about. And I love in, in Corinthians how. Um, Paul says, you know, for us to take every thought captive unto the mm -hmm. Lord. And if, yes. if, if we take every thought captive, and I believe that's 2 Corinthians um, 10, 5. But if we take every thought captive unto the Lord, how many times are we talking to God? It's not just negative thoughts, right? It's not just positive. <laughs> it's every thought. Well, how many thoughts do you have a day, Catherine? I, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions. Yeah. Million, you got no. thoughts thinking about thoughts right now, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so if we took every thought captive into the Lord, that's chain, That's taking everything as a prayer to him. And so mm -hmm. if we change our thought life to a prayer life, mm -hmm. how many times are we praying to him a day? Right. And you know, Paul says pray without ceasing, right? Yeah. So you got, so you, I can it, tell you're a writer. You've got a lot of great like one-liner slogans that are like quotable. So turn your thought life into a prayer life. So people people are probably wondering right now. Thank you, Nicola. I see your gift. No. Uh, people are probably wondering, well, how do I take my thoughts captive? And you mentioned turning your thoughts into prayers. Can you expand on that for people who are on here that maybe 
don't know how to pray or are a baby Christian, or maybe they don't have a relationship with God. And they're like, what do you mean take my thoughts captive? Because I think a lot of us let, let our thoughts get the best of us, which turns into emotions, which paralyze us or spiral us into a funk. We don't know how to capture them and hold them and bring them to God so they're not weighing on it. Can you explain more about that? Yeah, that, that's a, I I wrote a, I wrote a book called my prayer chair and um, it was, it was a lot, it was a lot of fun writing that. Um, It was based on my grandmama and she had a prayer chair and I I never really understood what that meant until a few years later when she, when I was rocking my first son and I called her and I said, grandma, what are you doing? And she goes, well, I'm just in my prayer chair. And in that moment, it was like, how many prayers has she rocked to heaven on behalf of her family? And it was, it was just overwhelming to me to think about that. And um, it was almost like she passed kind of that torch of prayer to the next generation. And, and it wasn't anything I could do. It was, Okay, God, help me become a, a a prayer warrior. You know, just a. I know in my own strength I can't do it, but through you, you're going to give me what I can't through your Holy Spirit. And so, um, I, the more that I have in my grown older, <laughs> seasoned, I, I, the more I've, I've realized if I will ask the Holy Spirit to help remind me how to pray and Mm -hmm. remind me whenever I'm stuck in my own mind of my Mm -hmm. own thoughts and my own fears to help remind me to take those thoughts captive and take them to him. Then it's like, okay, one day this, this idea came, I woke up and this was a few years back. I said, it hadn't even gotten out of bed yet. So, okay, help, help me today. Just one day at a time, help me today to live as much as I can in prayer every moment that I go along the way. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I got, I got to a store. It's called Ross. I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's just, yeah. it's kind of a discount store. Anyway, the, the line was really, really long. And, and I had gotten, I found this treasure I wanted. And I had a certain amount of time and the people were just aligned up and it was taking forever. And so I was looking at my watch and the person in front of me had a little kid that was just going around and around and just kind of making a lot of noise. And in my mind, my mind, I started wheeling with, they need to, she needs to do something about that kid, you know, or whatever. And then it was, I was reminded, remember, you asked me to remind you to pray. So I began praying over that little boy that was just running around. And before I knew it, it was up at the counter checking out. I don't even know how much time had gone by. And I watched that, that little kid walk out and this thought hit. And I don't know this. This is just the thought that came to my mind is I wonder if anybody else had been praying for that, that little boy. Yeah. Yeah. And at that moment, I thought we can also be prayer walkers. As we are mm-hmm. in the grocery store or we are walking along the way, we can pray for people. Yeah. And I, and it's it's up to God what he does with that. But how do we become that in our own lives so that it's not just about praying about me and my right. stuff, mm-hmm. but we really let the Holy Spirit teach us how to pray. Yeah, it's amazing what he does when we do that. And it changes our, again, it changes your thought life to a prayer life. I, I'm not perfect at it whatsoever, but that's my heart's desire. And um, it really yeah. is him doing it in me. So, oh. Well, we got Yatrem joined us and Nana and Jefferson. Thank you. Karen, thank you for the gift. You know, I, I want to touch on that because I, when you talk about turning your thought life into a prayer life and kind of getting annoyed at that kid, um, like whenever there's like voting happening and people are getting all political and I've had people around me complain, complain, complain about 
to whatever political candidate. And I always tell them, you know what? Yeah, they may have a lot of flaws, but if you spend as much time praying for them as you do complaining about them, they might actually change. They might actually, you know, it might actually make a difference for them. And it's so easy. And when we're out and about to go judging people, like, I can't believe that woman's treating her kid like that. I can't believe that guy's being so rude to his wife. If we just said, God, you know, start praying for them. God, help that man to cherish his wife. Help him to, you know, appreciate her lover. Under- whatever the, whatever we're witnessing, whatever we're complaining about, if we turn that into prayers, I think we would see a bigger difference in the world. And we have to get out of that mode about complaining about things and thinking, well, it's none of my business. If you see it, you can pray for it, whether it's your business or not. You can take that to God and and, you know, they may need people interceding for them. You never know what's going on in another person's world. And you can see them act up and act in a certain way, but not realize what is behind it. And it reminds me of, um, I think it was that book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And there was a story in there about um, this guy, he got on the, on the subway or the train and his kids were running around and acting wild and people were like, getting annoyed and the guy was just sitting there he wasn't doing anything and the kids were like running amok and the guy was looking all sad and 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 people were like you need to do something about your kids your kids are running around they're disturbing everyone on the train and the guy looks up and he says oh yeah I'm sorry I I I guess they don't know how to how to take it we just came from the hospital and and their mother just died and I'm just trying to think like I just don't know what to do now. And it's just how that one little bit of information changes your perspective from this guy doesn't control his kids. He's not true. You know, you don't know the full story and how easy is it us for to judge people based on some outward thing they're doing, not knowing the story behind it. Mm-hmm. So I love that turning Absolutely. your thoughts into prayers because you never know what someone is going through. Yes, Justina, we are stronger. She's saying, hey, she, Carla. <laughs> she, uh, she's Aunt Hazel. <laughs> oh, this is Aunt Hazel. Okay. I just, so, you, know. <laughs> you guys, the name of the new series on YouTube right now is Breaking Strongholds. Justina has joined us, and she plays Aunt Hazel on the show. So I do expect you guys to watch it. Now, in season one, is that just four episodes? Yes, four episodes right now. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, yep. and those are out now. And have you begun um, starting to think about shooting season two? Have you written it yet? It's already written, yeah. and we start in uh, next week, actually. Okay. Filming. Yeah. Okay, so it's, it's very exciting. exciting. But, you know, <laughs> you were talking, and it's easy to transition from what we were talking about to, to breaking strongholds because uh, you were talking about recognizing you know, when you're out and about and how to pray for other people. And, and we were talking about that mm-hmm. really when we, when you go to uh, the storyline of breaking strongholds, it starts out with a, a young man, you know, teen, teen who's isolating. He's dealing with um, just the pain of the past I don't want to get, I never, ever want to do any type of spoilers. So I'm always kind of careful how I talk about it. But anyway, but he's dealing with that and he is contemplating taking his life. And Mm -hmm. um, as he walks through to that point, he's reminded of kind of some negative things that have gone on in his life. Oh, yeah. There you go. Do you want me to play the trailer for everyone? That would be fantastic okay do it. so so instead of you guys hearing her talk about it let's take a peek at the trailer for breaking stronghold i when your parents brought you home from the hospital and and named you ryan uh, they probably never dreamed they'd be planning your funeral just a few years later Do you know who Redmond Quinn is? Yeah. His big complex retreat center thing is out between here and Navasota, right? Yeah, it's called Clarity Ranch. This town is just a, it's a microcosm of things to come. You understand that, right? Yesterday, 
when I couldn't find my son, it was like I was running out of air. We are his church. We're the only thing standing between this generation and the schemes of the enemy. We've got to stand for the truth. See, Ella, she didn't need nobody. Before she went to prison, she was half a witch. A queen down there, powerful. So if she wants you to do something, you're too afraid not to. I don't think you understand what's at the heart of the philosophy here. You're being used. That's the name of the game around here. How do I even know I can trust you? I don't guess you do. That was great to do that because I was going to try to explain a little bit of that. So that was perfect. <laughs> Picture says a thousand words. Uh, you guys have any questions about what you've seen? Any questions about anything that you're dealing with? Hey, Kyle. Good to see you on here. Uh, Elena says it looks really good. Uh, Thank yep, you, this Elena. Is, this looks like fire. Okay. We've got yeah. um, uh, Justina said that. Um, she believes that fear is no more than faith in reverse. <laughs> She's a wise okay. woman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, as far as breaking strongholds, um, the response has been fantastic. I see Elena, you know, it says it looked really good. Um, I, it's in those four episodes there, you know, we show the, the hope you know there's there's this hopelessness and we show a broken family and we show how when God begins to work how there's a communication that starts happening within the family uh, some healing that happens a father and, and son relationship mended there's just so many um, elements in there but but yet we do have an educational part to it and that is that all of us can be on mission together to look for those who are isolating that um, need to maybe be asked that question, you know, are you okay? And then how to ask the question if, if they're not, you know, are you thinking about taking your life? Are you thinking about suicide? And, mm -hmm. um, and then walk them to that place. If they say yes, walk them to that place of getting the help needed. Sometimes all it takes is one, one person. And, um, and we show, I think in a beautiful way, this, um, this in the, in the story and, and behind the scenes, there are so many God moments that happened on set. If you, if you go to our, our reflective media productions channel on, on YouTube, you can watch all four episodes. And all of them have, all of that has been provided by donations and sponsors. Uh, that's how we've been able to create Breaking Strongholds in the first place is through people who believed in what we do and, um, you know, monthly, monthly sponsors. I mean, we have monthly sponsors from $5 to uh, $500. And mm -hmm. so, um, so, you know, any of that helps, but it's really a true mission effort by so many different people. And, um, and just being able to, you know, help if, if we all say this, if, if one life is saved, it's worth it all. And, right. um, so we're already receiving feedback 
that's it's been a, a you know amazing but the priest oh that's what i was going to say on youtube you can watch the um the pre-show to each one of the episodes and i think those are as powerful as the episode itself because of of what is being said um or what has got is done with the actors on set behind the scenes there's just some incredible stories and so um so anyway mm -hmm. and then we also have a study guide that go, goes with it that you can do individually or do as a group. Our heart is that families start having conversations, you know, within their homes. Yeah. yeah, well, and that's and that's where everything is. You talked about broken family, lack of communication. I feel like everything breaks down, whether it's at work or with family or with friends, once the communication lines get bogged up or once we start thinking, instead of communicating with the person, we start thinking, oh, they're thinking this about me, or they don't like this about me, or they're, they're acting a certain way, it must be because I did something. So we get all these miscommunication ideas in our mind, that's not even what somebody is thinking or feeling, just based on one little thing that they did, maybe thoughtlessly or carelessly, they did something, and you make it mean this whole thing. And to be able to have that open communication, like, hey, Carla, I saw when I came into the room, you flipped the dish towel a certain way. And, you know, I could go home and think she doesn't like me. She wants to shoot me away. She whatever, whatever. When there could have just been like a fly. And, you know, yeah. <laughs> so we can make up entire scenarios in our mind about she doesn't, Carla doesn't want to be my friend anymore. <laughs> exactly. Based on our perception, our insecurity. So to be able to have this open communication, which I struggled with for years, to be able to um, go, to be able to say, hey, Carla, this may seem like, I don't know if this is going to seem weird, but I felt like there's this distance or this space between us because when I came in the other day, I saw you flip the towel and you could be like, no, 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 I love you. That's not what was happening. There was a fly buzzing around. But so many times, and, and especially those who are on the verge of suicide, yeah. on the verge of this breakdown, it's because they've, they've told themselves stories. Mm -hmm. They've made up things in their mind that they are not significant, that nobody likes them. They saw their friends go off and left them and didn't go to the party with them or the, mm -hmm. whatever it is. So they make up this whole, blow up this whole thing. Somebody doesn't want to be my girlfriend. I must be ugly and worthless. And, and you don't really know that maybe God was scaring you from that girl and all her drama. That would have been mm -hmm. like a big problem in your life. So it's, it's like that, that too is a stronghold. We've got Bethany here that asked, she's asking you, how do I break the stronghold of worry in my life? Do you have mm -hmm. any advice for her on that? Yeah, I, I'm going to kind of go back to where I was uh, talking about how that can reel, those worries can reel over and over in your mind. And I can't remember the percentage of the things we were, I wish I had looked this up before, but I knew it few years ago, but the things you worry 90%. about, that's yeah. it. Yes, it is 90. Don't happen. And 90% so, of the things you worry about do not actually do end up happening. Not, and, but it can reel you out of control. And so by asking the Lord to help you take that and change that thought to a, a prayer and take all of those things to him, he, I believe he will start breaking that in in our lives breaking that worry breaking that fear so hopefully okay. that that helps but but yeah and so we so what i was going to say too is we in the study guide so we have a study guide if you go to re, uh if you go to breakingstrongholds.com and you look up study guide it's at the top you can there's an each episode you can follow along in a in a very unique way i i I actually encourage everybody to binge watch it and then go back and watch again, but go through episode one on the study guide first, because for example, we'll say, um, before you watch episode one, these are the three things we want you to look for. Um, isolation. And then there's a question that goes with that negative thought patterns. So that's exactly what we we're ta talking about with worry and fear. Mm -hmm. And then the third one is deception and there's questions. So then you watch the episode with these questions in mind. Then you go back. And if you're doing this with 
you know, two people, 50, however many people you want to do it with, a small group. It can be a youth group. It can be a family. But then you discuss those things and you start Mm -hmm. and then take it to the application of, okay, have you ever had negative thought patterns in your own life? What did you do about it? What scripture did you use that helped break that or that you could share? And then, yeah. And then we also have an app called Seven Apples that we encourage you to download. And throughout the week, it leads you to scriptures that you can, that will help you with those three different areas isolation, deception, and negative thought patterns. Mm -hmm. And then, so, so there's a full study that I think if we could get people to really going in there and, and using that, I think it could be a tool that could be um, life changing. I really, really believe that. Because when you talk about something, just like our verse is, is based on John one five um, Mm -hmm. that, you know, that, darkness when it is exposed to the light right darkness Mm -hmm. is not overcome so 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 when when we expose those things that are hidden within and we talk about them it's bringing those that darkness to the light then it like dissipates it will dissipate that and so how can we work together on that you know and then we also have in there Mm -hmm where we direct people to a link called start and it's a, it's an online 60 minute suicide prevention. It's all about suicide prevention and how we can all be on mission together. Um, uh, this suicide mission, um, uh, a prevention. And, um, whenever I took one of their program, it's, it's called living works. I took their safe talk, which is the one that's recommended in, um, in the, the, breaking strongholds or we show Mm -hmm. in breaking strongholds about a week or two after I had taken it because it had given me ideas of what to look for when people are showing signs I was on Mm -hmm. Facebook one night and there was a lady that I just read her post and I thought these are the things that I was told to be looking for and so I messaged her she wasn't a direct friend of mine, just, you know, a Facebook friend, but we had a common friend in mine, or uh, connected. And so I began to have a message, a conversation with her and got to the point where I said, are you thinking about suicide? And she said, yes, I have a gun. And I was like, okay, now I've got to keep her in this conversation. In the meantime, I texted our common friend, Eric, and said, you need to get over to her house. I kept talking with her and he gets to her house, knocks on the door and he took it from there. And she was at that point. And is that anything that I did? No, it was because I recognized it, recognized the signs I had been trained into just how to have that conversation. And that's where we all can make a difference. You know? And this free training, this free training is on your website that we could watch and go through it to recognize the signs in others and how to approach them. So, so in the study guide, mm-hmm. when you get to episode two through four, we, we direct you or we encourage you to take a safe, the safe talk course. I think it's $30, but it's through mm-hmm. another organization called living. Oh, okay. But gotcha. it's 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 a, an affiliate link with us that we've worked with them uh, because mm-hmm. of, of breaking strongholds. Every it could be the best hour every single person could take for a yeah. grandparent out there. That's like I can't connect with my grandchild. I don't know how to have these conversations. It will help mm-hmm. encourage you how to have those conversations, how to mm-hmm. engage in 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 the the next generation and the culture of where they are. Um, Mm -hmm. every single person, I highly encourage every single person to take it. Many of our actors and, and crew have gone through safe talk and assist, even Justine out if she's still on here. She's been through, uh, the safe talk and assist James, her husband has been through it. My husband's been Mm -hmm. through it. It's, um, our, our, I, I can't say enough about how important it is. 
that we can okay. all be, let's all be on mission and let's be in, in our, yeah. in our communities and let's help yeah. save lives. Keep on the, keep on the lookout for it. So we've got Shirley that has joined us. We've got Edmund O'Neill saying his older sister Shirley is joining us today too. We've got Snita. Angela, thank you for the gift. Nicola, thank you for the gift. We've got Mona on here. Um, let's see who else has joined us. Denise, Denise, Tony. Uh, let's see. I'm let's see. I think she asked if I was an actress or a director. Um, I, no, I'm not an actress. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, not an actress. I am the, I'm a. I'm the producer. I'm the executive producer for Reflective Media Productions. Yes. Okay. Uh, Nicola wants to know, Carla, what advice would you give to your younger self? Hmm. I oh the. <laughs> I have never had anybody ask me that question. That is an awesome question. Um, I probably would say dive into God's word even more and really take to heart everything in God's living word because it is active and alive for us today. And I didn't realize that, uh, you know, years back, uh, like I, I do now. Now I cherish every word and hold on to it. And, ha and the more I'm in God's word, the more I feel like I know him, the more I know him, the more I love him, the more I love him, the more, more I want to know him more. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. It really becomes that. Once you go deep, you want to go deeper. Uh, somebody, uh, let's see, Lucas wants to know, how do you relieve stress? Hmm. Um, uh, For me, I'll, you can think about it up. I was having a really stressful day the other day and I just realized whenever I'm in that place, I just have to stop everything I'm doing and pray. I just have to get away, go for a walk, go for a drive and just go pray and just remove myself from the situation that is stressing me out. And even if I have to come back to it after I've, after I've prayed and even better, if you, if you, if any of you guys have a, like a heavenly prayer language and you can pray in that way so you're bypassing your brain and all the thoughts if you can just pray until the peace hits that's what i do that's that's my gauge how do i know to stop praying when peace hits when i feel like something lifted off me when i feel like the burden is gone and whether god gives me an answer right then of what to do or not or like i pray until the peace hits and then i feel a sense of relief and i go back with new eyes to the situation and yeah that's perfect I'd reiterate Probably. that same thing. Absolutely, oh, yeah. <laughs> With okay. a doubt. Okay. Joy wants to know if, if there's any advice on how to be less self-critical. Hmm. I think the more that we have, and that's a, that's a great question, even <laughs> that goes along with breaking strongholds as well, because mm -hmm. when we have our... Um, identity. I think many times today we have lost identity and purpose. And when we know our identity and we see our identity in Christ, he will, sh he will give us our purpose. And um, so I don't know if that helps answer that question some, but that that's kind of what helps me. If, if I know how my heavenly father views me, mm -hmm. Then I'm a, and I see myself through his eyes, then I'm lo mm -hmm. not looking at me personally and yeah, uh, or judging also, against the cell phone and what, you know, social media, that kind of thing. Right. Know who you are in him mm -hmm. and he will give you uh, the, the purposes. And I, the, these words right here, when, when this came to my heart, I wish I'd known this back when I was very young, but Life is not about me. It's all about him. Those, those few words right there were life-changing. And I yeah. realized that it's just not about me. Mm -hmm. so, and, and, and I would add to that, um, to, that we need to all stop comparing ourselves to other people. Because the moment we start thinking, oh, how come I don't? look as strong as him how come my muscles aren't as good as his how come my hair isn't as 
silky smooth as hers? How come my abs aren't showing? And I, when we start comparing ourselves, that's when we become critical. When we think that we have to live up to some idea, like she says, what's on yourself or what's on social media. And we're trying to live up to these people that are photoshopped or we're trying to live up to these celebrities who have personal trainers, personal chefs, they have everyone doing everything for them. And we, and who knows if they're in some taking, taking things that are destroying their body to keep that size, if they're starving and so we don't know what they're doing to get that. And it's not an ideal thing for everybody. God made us all unique. The moment we take our eyes off of trying to be something else and somebody else, we put them on God and what do you want for me? What do you have for me? Things you don't become as critical when you realize God created you just the way you are on purpose for a purpose for you to fulfill something that no one else can do. He made you special and unique and nothing about the way that you look can stop you from achieving the purpose God gave you. It, it becomes a, a big relief. And then, and, and then as far as comparison goes, when you have all these ideas of why you can't do something because of, you could also use social media, the Google, the internet for your advantage, because you can go on and Google, you know, if you think, well, my, I'm, I don't, my legs got cut off in an accident or something. You can go on and find Olympic sports runners with like prosthetic legs. If you think, oh, I'm too heavy to be a dancer, you can Google overweight plus size dancers. You can look up all the things that you think are your excuses for not doing it and find people who are. So you can use it to your advantage rather than your disadvantage. Mm -hmm. um, That's good. Okay. Looking at the other questions. Oh, you know, I did want to say, you know, your scripture um, was a, tell me the scripture again about darkness and light. Yeah. John, John one, five, John one, mm -hmm. five. Okay. So I guess what I light want to touch on. It, it says light shines in the darkness and darkness has not overcome. So it, it's that, you know, when you're in a dark room, you strike a match. It, the light, it, it cannot, it cannot stay dark. And a lot of times when we're going through depression or we're going through a dark time, you know, they call it a dark time for a reason. We're not letting our light shine. We're not allowing the light of God into our situation. And I have a poem I wrote years ago, and one of the lines in it is talking about how secrets can only hold their power when they're hidden. But when you put mm. your secret out into the light, when, once the light shines on it, the darkness flees. Satan has mm -hmm. to flee. And right now, if, if, if the devil is speaking to you, you can't tell anybody this. This is our secret. People aren't right. going to like you. They tell you they're going to think it's your fault. You know, he's whispering all these things. He wants to keep that stronghold. He wants to keep that chokehold on your life. You think, I can't tell anybody. Maybe you're a victim of something and you've been keeping it a secret. You haven't told anyone. But it's, it's that secret has allowing you to believe you're worthless, that something is your fault, that you're to blame. You can spiral into this depression. But, mm -hmm. you know, just like scripture says, you know, confess your sins to one another. I think we all need to get to a place where we can confess issues, problems, hurt, pain of the past. So we, so we're not carrying around that heavy burden by ourselves. So if you can right. find somebody you trust to share, like, hey, this thing happened to me, and I've been thinking all these years it's my fault. My parents abused me. This happened. My uncle, this, whatever it is. If you can let that out into the light then the darkness cannot overcome you. That's and a lot, right. of, a lot of depression and self-worth sometimes comes from these secret hidden thoughts that you've never told anyone, which whether it's something that happened to you or whether it's this whole scenario you've made up in your mind, it has to come out into the light in order for you to be free from it, to break its power. Well, you know, a testimony to that. And, and I tell you what, you and I could be speaking the same words out of each other's mouths because that's exactly what I would say. I appreciate that more than you can imagine. I, I really do. I'd love to read your poem. Um, uh, we had a, one, one of the things that we really are, are praying is that breaking strongholds will be part of a discussion within families because how many families today 
don't sit and have the deep discussions that really right. need to be happening underneath your roof. How, how many times do you go to a restaurant and if there's four in a family sitting at a table, all of them are on their phones? Have you, have you seen, yeah. have you seen that it's happening yeah. and yeah. they're not, they're not doing the eye contact and having the, the conversations laughing together. And yeah. uh, so the episode one, when it released the breaking strongholds, there was a group that did, did it with the study. And one of the, the men in there, and I, I wasn't there. I just heard the testimony from a, a, a watch group and said, one of the guys, 76 years old, as they started discussing, he started bought like tears just flowing as he talked about when he was 16, how he tried to take his life. And mm. he had never told anybody about it. And mm. he started talking about the problem that he had had between he and his father. And he never heard his father tell him he loved him. And he said, this is the first time in an open, I guess he had talked with his wife, but I'm just saying in an open group that he had ever had this discussion before. And the next time when he came back for the next, um, to, to, for the next episode, and they were going mm -hmm. through the study, he said the relief he had of all these years of holding that in was released last week when he shared it. <laughs> and that yeah. darkness. When he yes. it was released and it had no power over him. Yes. And so, so sharing, sharing what you guys are going through is going to help release that darkness from you. And the devil wants you, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Yeah. This will make you look bad. Nobody will want to be your friend after this. They're going to think of you differently. And that is a stronghold you can break by sharing. Yeah. Talking, open lines of communication. So I highly uh, recommend breakingstrongholds.com and looking at the study guide and going mm -hmm. through those conversations with your family. Uh, Carla, people want to know how many kids you have. Oh, I have four. I have four. <laughs> I have three boys, a daughter, they're all married. And I have, and, and, um, I'm, and I'm, uh, been married 38 years to my high school sweetheart and we yeah we have nine grandbabies <laughs> so wow amazing i don't i don't know if you know edmund o'donnell but he wants me to tell you that he is going to be a grandpa in two months his daughter's oh, about good. to have a baby <laughs> oh, they're the best <laughs> let's see i'm trying to see if there's any um, any last questions that you guys had for her? Oh, somebody wanted to know, is it going to be on Netflix? Is it know, on, it's on, is it on Prime or is it it's on um, PureFlix? Right now, right now, yeah, obviously. We, we wanted to release it first on YouTube um, so that we could have direct access to being able to help um, directly with anybody who needs help. So, that's been kind of our, our first time, but it, it, this summer it releases on Pure Flix. It's going to, uh, I believe Crackle is picking it up as well. Uh, okay. Amazon Prime. And then, um, then there's a number of different, uh, hopefully season two. We'll, we'll see what happens. The, the response on season one has been amazing. I mean, it's a, it's a faith-based mystery drama series. And so mm -hmm. it keeps you like on the edge of your seat, you know, wanting more. So, <laughs> yeah. And you guys, when 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 we get off here today, I, I suggest you, like she said, go binge watch. It's called Breaking Strongholds, and it's right here on YouTube. So, uh, Carla, is there any last thing that I did not ask you that you've been wanting to share? Any last message you want to get across, or anything you want to say? Well, I. You know, I just directed to you, I, I want to say thank you for uh, this opportunity. And I had been praying for different people to collaborate with on YouTube and, and share, you know, messages. And, you know, as we work together, it's amazing how strength happens, right? And 
then I was connected to you through a mutual friend. And I, I'll never forget our first conversation. I just felt like I was talking to my sister. It, it, that's how <laughs> much we connected. And, and you're an answer, answer to prayer. And Aww. I just want to thank you for, no, seriously, we had been praying and you were used by God as an answer to prayer for this this morning. And I just, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you and thank you. And obviously everybody's loving you. I'm just looking at these comments and they love you. So <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm you. thrilled to have this opportunity. And if anybody again wants uh, to connect with us, uh, we would just, if they would subscribe to uh, reflective media productions and then uh, like it, you know, comment, Let's have some conversations. We have a fan yeah. page on uh, Facebook. If you want to join our fan page, we're actually going to be going through the episodes and the leaders, uh, the study guide together, which will be fun what is as the, a group. What's the name of What's the name of the fan page? I'll put it in the chat for people. Breaking Breaking Strongholds uh, fan page, I believe, is what it is. Uh, some, I think that's what it is. Breaking Strongholds fan page. Does that sound right? Let's see. Okay. I can look that up real quick just to make sure. But um, yeah, official fan page. So okay. it just says Breaking Strongholds official fan uh, fan group fan fan group. Okay, fan group. And if yeah. people want to get a hold of you for any reason, how would they do that? You know, the best way is probably um, you can either uh, email me Carla at Reflective Media dot org okay, or so uh, message me on face facebook can be fun too so. okay awesome well thank you for being on today and letting everybody know about your new series and and most importantly how they can help get out of their destructive dark thoughts and help realize the signs in others if they see someone else that's pulling away or isolating or that whole thing so we can stop suicides from happening. So this has Absolutely. been a wonderful discussion. Thank you, Carla. I hope everybody who's seeing this goes and watches the show and leaves messages thank and you. really thank you for everything. Okay, guys. Thank we'll you for everything. You nice Bye. to meet all of you. <laughs>